Thank you very much. It's really nice to be here. It's nice to be sitting in such close proximity to a magistrate and not have him be reading a verdict out about me. So that's good. <laughs> Um, I guess I wanted to start off by letting you know where I am now in my life. And I don't want to sound like I'm bragging, but I want to brag just a little bit because after that I'm going to go back to the beginning and it's important for you to know where I am now. Uh, in the last 14 years I've held 25 solo exhibitions and been in over 60 group exhibitions. I've been shortlisted for 18 art prizes and won or placed in six. I'm a PhD candidate and I've completed a, a diploma in applied photography and a degree in fine art. In fact, I think I might have done my diploma here. Was this NMIT at one point? Yes. Yeah, I did it here, which is a strange uh, bit of synchronicity. Uh, but to discuss the artwork, I, I've chosen one particular artwork that I wanted to talk about and to discuss that artwork I need to go back to the beginning. This is me and my mum uh, in our flat in St Kilda. My childhood was a really turbulent childhood. Uh, I was an only child with a single mother who was a heroin addict, a prostitute and a stripper. When I was 13, my mother introduced me to drugs and by the time I was 16, I was a drug addict. And at that time, she passed away from cancer and I was on my own from that point on. The tragedy of her death uh, set me on a path of self-destruction. I was already on one, but it really cemented the path that I was on. And I became a full-blown drug addict. I ended up in a, um, in a violent relationship for four years uh, with a drug dealer and in my early 20s I left him and I hopped on a plane and I flew to London. I had $20 in my pocket and I went on my own and the day that I arrived I used drugs. I thought I was going to get away from my problems but I just took them with me. The day that I arrived I used drugs and I started dealing in nightclubs not long after. I had been around drug dealers my whole life. It wasn't a huge stretch for me to do this to support myself. By the time I was 24, I was 42 kilos, overdosing regularly, and going into a drug-induced psychosis that would see me hospitalised about four times. Eventually, I was caught, and I ended up sentenced to four years in prison in London, in a prison called Holloway. I spent nine months before I was sentenced. I ended up serving two years in prison. These are photos of me in prison in London. And two, maybe three important things happened to me during this pivotal moment in my life. The first was, for the first time in my life, I had access to support that I'd never had before. I did 12-step programs, I did rehab programs, I did therapy, group therapy, um, cognitive behavioral therapy. I just used that two years to the best of my ability to sort my head out and sort my heart out and work out what was important to me and um, get some clarity for the first time in my life. And it was also the first time in my life since I was 13 that I didn't really have access to drugs in the way that I did before. The second main thing that happened to me that changed me was I found my faith. I became a Christian. Uh, upon my release at the end of 2001, and after experiencing a highly traumatic childhood that resulted in many years of drug addiction and uh, going to prison, I needed to spend time unraveling who I was, where I'd come from, and where I was going. Um, so I began to make art. I began to study art here <laughs> at MIT. And what I found was that as I made art, I was able to take, use art as a methodology to unearth the tensions that existed within me and put them in front of me and, and reconcile them. So for me, art has always been about catharsis and dealing with things. Uh, I've always used it as a way, as a deeply personal expression of what I do. So my art can be very voyeuristic. Um, and I often view my identity through the lenses of media and the politics and so I make art that also speaks into these things. So in many ways my art traverses the line between self, the cultural and the political. Which brings me to this piece of art that I made in 2013. It's called EH5452. By the time I'd made this I was already a successful artist. 
In 2010, I was named one of Melbourne's top 100 most influential people. But what I realised was that I was making all of this art, I was having all of this success, but nobody knew that I'd spent two years in prison. I was hiding it. I was volunteering in the local women's prisons, which I still do. I've been doing that for nine years. In fact, I was in there this, this week. Um, and so I'd go into the prison and I'd meet with the women and I'd build a relationship with them and I'd tell them that they don't have to be defined by their circumstances, that they don't have to carry shame around it. Then I would come out of prison and I would do my work and have exhibitions and nobody would know that I was kind of living this double life. And so I realised that I still carried a whole lot of shame about this time that I'd spent in prison. So what do I do? Of course, I take the methodology that I've developed, which is an art practice, to unearth the tension within me, and I begin to make an artwork about it. The result is this work, EH5452, which is, was my prison number when I was in prison in London. It's a video work of me, a video and an installation work, and this is uh, installed at a gallery in Sydney called the MCA, the Museum of Contemporary Art. I was invited to make a work in there as part of a show called Taboo that was curated by an uh, Indigenous artist called Brooke Andrew. I've got Indigenous heritage. And he gave me kind of a broom cupboard and I turned it into a little girl's prison cell. I made a video of myself reading actual diary excerpts that I wrote <coughs> while I spent time in prison. I also included uh, a number of artefacts from my time in prison in this vitrine down here and I sewed scriptures onto the soft furnishings. And there's also, you can't see it in this image, but there's also a small TV and a video of me in prison um, doing a, a dance program. I made the room like a little girl's prison cell because prison for me was an absolute place of transformation. And it worked. Making this artwork actually worked for me in terms of co uh, confronting the shame, bringing it outside of me, taking something that was dark and hidden and turning it into something revelatory and beautiful. It was kind of a coming out of sorts <laughs> as an ex-con. I no longer felt the shame associated with it. And I know that other people with similar experience who see this artwork will have a similar revelation where they don't need to be defined by their time in prison, that it can actually be um, it, rather than it defining your life, it can be a launching pad into the rest of your life, which it was for me. And making this artwork freed me to be who I am fully. That's my ID card from when I was in prison. That was in the vitrine. I always think I look sweet and innocent there. That's the video. Because it's so heavy and I want to be the fun, um, jokey girl, but I'm always the serious, intense girl. And so I dressed in a convict's outfit to try to make light, I suppose, of the kind of serious nature of what I was doing. In prison cells, everybody has an, a board where you put photos and sayings and quotes and letters and things that are important to you. And so I just installed all of these photos that were taken of me in prison. That's just before I was about to be released and deported back here. When I was uh, released, I was picked up from the prison. I just I didn't have this, but I'll tell you this because it's a funny story. I was picked up from the prison, escorted to the airport, locked up at the airport. This is after two years of being locked up. Locked up at the airport for, for almost a day and then escorted onto the plane and before anybody got on. And it was the first time when I was left on the plane that I'd experienced freedom in, in a couple of years. So I started to cry. It was like this pent up kind of emotion started to pour out of me. And, Everybody gets on the plane and takes their seats and I'm still crying, not like ugly, ugly crying, but just these tears, <laughs> pretty tears just rolling down my face. And um, I, people get on and we take off and I'm still crying and the guy next to me, he, he's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I just wanna go home. But before that, the staff had come up to me and said, we don't want you to be any trouble, we know where you've come from and, blah, blah, blah. and that kind of upset me even more. I was like, I just wanna go home. And uh, we take off, we're in the air, the guy goes, look, I've got something that might help you. And he gives me about three or four Valium. <laughs> and thank you. And I put them in my pocket. And he gets up at some point. We're about half an hour into the flight. He gets up. He walks off. And a few minutes later, the hostess comes to me. She says, can you come with me, please? And because I've still got this prison mentality, I've got contraband in my, I think I've got contraband in my pocket. I think I'm in trouble for having the Valium. 
And so they call me to the galley and they say to me, look, uh, my name at the time was Miss Cole, I've since gotten married. They said, look, we can see you're not going to be any trouble and we really feel for you. So we're going to upgrade you to business class. <laughs> <laughs> So I wonder if I'm the only person who's ever been deported, <laughs> upgraded to business class. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Recently, this work was installed in an old prison here in Victoria, the old Beechworth prison. This installation has been shown in eight galleries throughout Australia, including the MCA, Shepherd and Art Museum, Maroonda Art Gallery. Recently, it was here at the old Beechworth prison. And it brings me to my conclusion, which is that art is so powerful not only f for the viewer, for the person who's making it, it can be absolutely transformative for the people who are looking at it. It can speak and cut through things in a way that just speech or posters or whatever cannot. And so I'm so for and supportive of the program that you're doing here. And I hope it's a model that you build and, you, and that you um, somehow roll out into other justice centres and courts as well because what a fantastic idea. It, and I loved what you said about the posters. It's absolutely true. People here already have problems. To come in and be able to connect to things that they see visually just makes everything that little bit easier. And so thank you for having me. I really 100% support what you guys are doing. And, um, and well done. The art is beautiful. I, got, I had a chance to look around and um, I think it's fantastic. Oh, and I just thought I'd finish up with this, <laughs> which is my two children because they're my most amazing artworks.